just a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Paul, and I was originally born in the Channel Islands, Guernsey, on the Channel Islands between the uh, coast of uh, France and uh, England Authority. Um, working for Port Emergency Services, which was rescue, law enforcement, etc. Boarding ships, bringing ships in through the channel, uh, taking pilots out onto ships and boarding them, uh, and then doing inspections and etc. Uh, etc. Et so I did that for quite a few years, um, and of course the, the interest just grew from that point. Again, as I got older, changed positions like we many many of us do, and. Uh, got out of that but uh, anyway uh, after changing my uh, my job I still had the interest of, of working on waterfronts or beaches so uh, I was then a ranger and senior ranger and then manager of uh, four shores and beaches so I've always been on the water all my life uh, since I was born anyway um, I decided to have a hobby and I thought well I'm going to start trying to build boats or ships or models or something uh, when I had the time in my young years about 20 odd years ago so I started off and I started on this, uh, this ship I was going to build a container ship only a small one but it finished up about around about two meters two and a half meters in other words, enormous for a model. But I decided to do it, so I built the hull. Anyway, uh, as time goes, of course, we all work so hard and change jobs so many times, as some of us do. Lost interest uh, because of work, and then had a marriage split up. Everything just went, disappeared, never saw the boat again. Uh, and my intention was, that in those days, that's something that I wanted to hand it down to my hand down to my children. Um, once I was gone, and that was the main goal. Anyway, um, one day went to see the ex-mother-in-law, which I still keep in contact with. God love her, great greatest mother-in-law anyone could ever have. You don't hear that very often. Anyway, um, we're sitting there having a cup of tea, and she just turns around. And, when are you going to get rid of that old ship in my garage? Um, straight away, I was, what ship? What are you talking about? Is that damn ship that's still in my garage with all the rest of your junk? So I finished up, got the ex brother in law, said, Come on, let's go and have a look. He said, Yeah, it's in there, it's in there somewhere. So we dug it out, and I mean, dug it out. It was right at the bottom. It was buckled and twisted, and it was only the hull. That's as far as I got to. Building the hull out of plywood, which was an old door, any bit of scrap timber I could find. The only electrical tool I had was a jigsaw. Everything else was done by hand. So anyway, got it out, took it home, and an old work trailer sitting out there. I strapped it onto the work trailer, and of course out in, the, uh, out in the sun here in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, in the rain. Sat it out there for weeks and weeks. Turn it upside down, strap it down again, turn it upside down, strap it down again. Finally I've got the shape back to normal. Reinforced a little bit uh, through the hole. Didn't leak. Had filled it up with water. Didn't leak. I thought, wow, this is fantastic. I'm going to get back into it. So the interest came back, I started working on it and unfortunately um, as time went on I stopped back to work 7 days a week, 12 to 14 hours a day, didn't have the time, uh, I had a serious spinal injury uh, or operation I should say, it wasn't the injury, it was uh, something that happened to the spine. So I had a serious spinal operation, which paralyzed me for quite a while. Anyway, I'm back to normal. Uh, now I'm starting to walk, I can use my hands um, again. I decided while well, I'm sitting at home, and now because of the coronavirus and everything else, can't go anywhere, absolutely bored. I'm so used to working seven days a week, etc., etc. a long story short, I decided to get back into it. I've just turned my spare bedroom back into my workshop 
because I can't walk up the steep driveway into the shed and I really don't want to use any electrical tools um, um, the ones I've got here are just carving tools etc I don't build kits out of plastic I want to build ships out of plywood, wood etc so what I've done here, um, I'm nearly to completion stage. I've just organized a 10 channel um, remote control with a full kit, so a new motor, a new operational gear. I'm now in the midst, I've just got some new cable, some data cable actually, some data cable that's given to me from a friend, and that's all I've done, is built this thing out of scrap. Anything I can find, old water pipe, PVC, whatever. So I'm rewiring it um, to solar and um, I'm using solar out of those old garden lights so that's going to go up onto the uh, upper deck and uh, that will run all the lights. And what I'm interested in, you people out there, uh, if you're building ships or anything, any sort of model, I'd love to hear from you. Um, any ideas would be fantastic and this is the reason I, I, I've put this on to YouTube is to get some sort of feedback from people and uh, make contact no matter where you are because most of the gear here that I was looking for comes from the UK and it's not cheap so I thought no I'm going to start making my own and I've just for the first time purchased and put together small figurines of navy people which I will paint in the, the normal colours instead of the army or air force or navy or whatever and I've just put them together this week so I've got to really paint these these are going to be the workmen onto the ship instead of navy officers etc um, so that's the only plastic thing and out of the kit that I've actually ever bought everything else has just been from uh, like the differential motor was from an old race car that I had and the remote control I'm going to rip that out so I'm changing everything that's about the only thing I'll hopefully um, have it finished in a few weeks depending on my supplier which I've ordered the remote control from when they reopen after the coronavirus so anyway this is what it looks like at this stage in my spare room this is the ship as you can see it's not it's not small by no means it's quite large and I've actually turned it into a gas tanker the uh, here we are okay at the stern the stern all lifts out of course there's one of the, the small workmen I put up in there all this lifts out See that is the old differential, the old motor from remote control car. It's a bit hard doing it with one hand. Uh, I have lights on, on the ship at the moment. Everything, um, everything works. The uh, the bow and the stern lights. All the small. Point them out. It's hard to. Hard to see, right. Where is it? Sorry. Right there, all the small lights. All these work. So bow, stern, port and starboard lights are actually in here. They all work. All the lights inside of the different cabins. And what I've done is so it's not too boring. Inside I've put green. Some are yellow, some are orange. So in other words, at night, they're all different colours. The sign I just picked up from the local general store. These here are actually a plastic pipe, which I've cut in half and two ends. All the gangways, these some are wire, uh, some are um, actually um, uh, shazzlick sticks and all glued, just finished this one off uh, a couple of days ago the, uh, the two gangways this whole section here lives out where I will put 
all the rest of the electrical equipment in here. So that will be the main area. As you can see, that looks like a flat deck. But what I did when I built the when I built the ship, it's flat up to this section here. You can see there. And then I have built from there to the centre. I have then angled and put another separate bottom so that it's totally waterproof um, and it doesn't it's been filled up that many times um, even on the bow uh, we've got the lights uh, I'm working on the chain I'm still looking for anchors if anybody can ever come up I'm trying to find out where I can buy decent anchors from or I have to make them out by hand but all this sort of gear Everything has been been made by hand. The only thing which I point out here, the only thing that's been machined, which was an old lathe that I had many years ago, and that's the only thing that's been done on a machine. Everything else is done by hand. And if anybody's got any ideas, I would be happy to redraw this all the way through. It doesn't only go down that deep. But I'm looking at some sort of method I can use for smoke. To have smoke actually coming out of the stack. I have sound uh, through Bluetooth. Um, I had a, uh, a terrific little setup. Excuse my fingers over the... I'm not used to this phone. This is a, a new phone. I had um, a Bluetooth phone set up to a sound system. It's a small, um, small speaker in the in the ship, and uh, I could get any sound whatsoever from old ships. And once you push that, you actually get the sound coming out of the ship, and it's really loud. So that's my other plan as well. But I've misplaced the the uh, Bluetooth speaker. Uh, I might have to buy another one, but that's probably the only electric in there the next electronic thing I'll have to buy. So I want to make it as natural as possible, as real as possible, um, and I'm quite proud of that. My next one's going to be, um, which I'll hopefully start next week, will be a um, pilot boat. And the pilot boat's actually, it's, um, we're not talking about something that flies, if you've never heard of a pilot boat. A pilot boat actually takes a pilot, which brings the ships in through the Port Phillip Heads here in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. So uh, a lot of areas, even Italy, places like that, Germany, they have to have a pilot and his experience to bring the ships in through the harbour, berths the ship, um, he's in control. He just tells the captain what to do and uh, that's their position. But to get, which I have been out, to get a pilot onto a ship is not an easy job. It is so risky, it's dangerous, it's scary. You're out there sometimes in 10 meter waves or more and you have to get onto that ship as it's moving. They don't stop. So that's my next boat. Um, they're unsinkable and uh, fast. So that, of course, I'll go to a different mechanism, different um, thing, but the 10 channel remote control system that I will have will be able to control that. I've also got a drone coming from the USA, uh, which is a waterproof drone, because I lost my other one through Port Phillip Heads. <laughs> I lost it, don't know where it is. Went out through the water, so I've lost one drone. This next one is waterproof. It actually floats on the water and can film under, under the water. So uh, hopefully I'm gonna have some video of this ship with a drone taking um, a live uh, video of the ship once it's um, out there working touch wood so please um, again drop us a line get in contact with us uh, i'd love to hear from anyone that's got ideas uh, and, and i'd like to see your ideas too because um, that's how how it all works you know you've got time to do it and uh, 
let's face it, with the tools that I've got here. And I'm sure there are other people out there, and I've seen some videos uh, with band saws and everything else. These are made my carving tools. Um, as I said, I, I don't do anything else with my soldering iron, which I do all my own electrical work. Um, over here, all I've got is um, the different cutters, paint brushes, small screwdrivers, every drill container, every part that you can think of, paints, which I'm building a, a lot more of, uh, I've got to get a lot more paints in, and uh, small miniature vise, which I use, and a glue gun, and of course, with um, all the different bits and pieces. Uh, for, for grinding, for carving, that's about all. That's my latest. Um, I've just got the new, and I really recommend them, a Zito. Um, they're only cheap. They're only a cheap brand. Um, a Zito with wand. And there's your wand. And of course, with the sander on that one, and you can have drills, you can grind, you can do everything, carve. So I really do highly recommend it. That's just brand new, just got it. Um, and so far, it's been fantastic. But anyway, that's enough for me. I don't want to bore you with tears. But uh, as I said, um, please, I'd love to hear from you. And uh, let's see if we can get something going and uh, see some of your work and uh, maybe compare and get some great ideas from you. All the best and uh, stay healthy and uh, while you're home of course with this coronavirus find something to do and this I highly recommend it all the best god bless bye bye hi don't forget to like and subscribe my channel and mark the notification click on the notification I should say down below